So what I'm trying to show you is a 2018 F-150 5.0 355 locking rear differential. You can change your rear differential fluid if you choose. I wouldn't recommend never doing it. So let's get to the point. 355 locking rear differential does not need friction modifier. That's for a limited slip. All you need is 7585 synthetic hypoid gear oil. Make sure you buy that. If you don't, something goes wrong. Not my problem. So um, I decided to do mine at 40,000 miles. If you tow and haul quite often, it's going to break down that fluid. It takes about three quarts, um, under three quarts. But anyway, buy that fluid. The most important thing to do. <clears throat> I have some pictures. Sorry, it's pollen season. I have a lot of, uh, you know, pollen or whatever in my throat here and some mulch. You can do it if you want. So basically, I'm going to show you a picture of the pumpkin rear differential, where you're just taking your fingers, where you see the plastic pieces, putting it behind the screw and just pulling forward. Those are sensor lines, whatever the case is. You don't, you don't even have to take off your spare tire. You, you just don't. So remove those little plastic pieces by just sticking your finger and pulling them off, just tuck them behind the pumpkin, whatever the case is. Righty tighty, lefty loosey for taking off all those nuts. Once you take off all those bolts, fluid's not even gonna come pouring out. What I do recommend is taking a screwdriver, uh, a thin flathead screwdriver, and sticking it on the bottom right corner of the pumpkin in between the actual pumpkin and the face plate and just tapping. I've seen videos where some guy took this little razor blade and man, he's sitting there trying to, eh. Uh, I don't know how he did it, but it, it wasn't working for me. So what did work is I took that screwdriver, bottom right corner, between the actual pumpkin and the faceplate, tap, and then it broke the seal, which was gasket material. It was not an actual gasket. And the fluid came out, but of course I had my pan below it, and of course you'll see that little picture right there. Um, what I want to show you next is a picture of the pumpkin faceplate itself, and then the actual rear differential itself exposed where you see the gears the faceplate you're going to see that red arrow where that red arrow was pointing this is important don't yo dog your truck and buy some fancy pretty looking groove with a skull faceplate for your differential because i'll tell you what i was watching some video of some guy who's really good at differentials <clears throat> you see that red arrow there's a groove that's where the big gear uh kind of you know forms to that spot and as it's spinning it's picking up fluid and flicking it this way towards that rear carrier bearing if you get one if your truck comes with one shape like that you better get the exact same shape because if you don't and it's trying to pick up that fluid and let's say it's uh square like this instead of rounded like that the fluid is going to hit that top wall come down, not get fluid to that rear carrier bearing, and sorry about your luck. Don't be like, yo, dog, I want the parts plus dog, and I got this badass faceplate from my rear diff dog. It looks so cool. People are going to be so scared when they see my truck underneath it, dog. Don't buy it, okay? So, glad I got that out of the way. Now you're going to see the surfaces. You see how the faceplate is also all shiny? I believe it's the blue arrow. Um, I wouldn't recommend sandpaper. Just take a scraper, scrape off the old gasket material, clean it up with some goof off, nothing crazy. I recommend spraying some brake cleaner inside the differential to clean out the gears. You'd be surprised. They're not black and horrible, but they look, look at them now. Look at that picture I just showed you, uh, or I'm going to show you. They're actually nice and shiny and Basically, just spray some brake cleaner inside the gears and all over the spider gears in the bottom. And then just wipe from the bottom. Don't put anything else in there. No water, nothing else, no gasoline. Wipe from the sump, which is the bottom of the differential. Okay. And you've done the same thing to your rear differential. You scraped all that old gasket material off. Just make it look as clean as what I did. You don't need special tools. You don't need special anything. I'm going to post a picture of how to put the gasket material on. If you're going to use actual gasket material, RTV, uh, get the black one. I don't know, something about the 
adhesiveness of the black one is 10 times better. I think uh, the Kit Car and Airwolf were both made out of this material, and that's why missiles and bullets were uh, bounced off of those two vehicles. And most of you don't even know what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, the illustration is going to show how much to use and the exact pattern you followed. It's, it's really not hard. Yeah, it was the first time I did it. I was like, oh, God, please don't screw this up. But basically, just follow those steps. Make sure you put that Motorcraft 7585 synthetic hypoid material back in there. You clean those two surfaces off. You sprayed out the inside. You wiped. Then you put the RTV on the faceplate. You don't need to put it on the faceplate and the differential itself. Just put it on the faceplate. Put it on there. Hold it with one hand. Thread in a screw. Just finger tight with another so it's not going all over the place. Put the rest of the screws in. And um, kind of like a tire. Just tighten them all finger tight. Then tighten this one. Tighten that one. Tighten this one. Tighten, tighten, tighten. Just keep going around until they're all snug. You can probably take... You don't need special torque wrenches. All that crazy stuff. I mean, a lot of this stuff is kind of gimmick i mean unless something i don't know if you're putting on a head gasket and it requires a certain amount of torque i don't know man it's a different story take your wrench make it tight and then uh, just do that and you're fine that's it's it's torqued let it dry overnight now before you put the fluid in that's pretty much what happens with old differentials is the seal finally wears and then you get drips so just let it dry overnight once it's torqued down and dries overnight I should have covered this in the beginning, but I didn't. The first thing you do uh, before you start unscrewing that differential cover is you unscrew the fill plug first. You take that faceplate off and you do all this rigmarole and you put it back on there. And oh, geez, the fill plug is seized up. Well, you're up a creek without a paddle. First brake torque on that fill plug. I'll take a picture of that and show you where that is. And... As long as it's loose, clean it up with a wire brush. Let's say you have a drill, a little wire brush. Just hold it with a pliers and, you know, just clean it up because they put um, thread lock around there or just buy a new nut. But you don't have to. It's just a real pain to get it back on if you don't. So I cleaned up mine. So you clean up the thread. Don't put thread lock around. You just don't need this stuff. You figure once you're done and you fill and you put this thing back on and snug it, what's it going to do, fly off? Because of pressure? No. I'm even going to show you a picture of the um, fill. Like, well, actually, you don't want to use that for my uh, transfer case. Basically, take the bottle, stick it in tube, squeeze. Now, you're done filling when it starts coming out of the top and dripping down the differential cover. About two and a half quarts of that stuff. Do that the next day. Just fill it the next day, and that's really it. Um, easy. But that stuff's it's it's thirty thirty five dollars a quart for that. But hey, it's up to you if you want to cheap out and take something, put something different in there. But I don't recommend it. I hope this helps some of you. It's not a big job. It gives you a sense of pride. Thanks again for watching Kinetic Energy ten eighty five. Yep.